Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting a picture of a piece of pie and it's a cherry pie and if you have been watching my channel for really any length of time at all you probably know that I am obsessed with pie. I love any sort of food painting, food illustration, but pie is one of my favorite foods to eat, one of my favorite foods to make, and so naturally it is one of my favorite foods to draw. So um, yeah, I am going to be using a mix of different medium today. Um, I'm going to use my, uh, what is the brand called? I always blank on it, even though I'm so obsessed with them. <laughs> um, my watercolor pencils, my newer watercolor pencils. I can't think of the brand name right now, but I'm gonna put it on the screen and in the description box. And uh, also my Coranda Ash pencils. And um, I think that will be it for what I use today, but I will uh, pop in and mention if there's anything else. Uh, anyway, I have been really enjoying videos of, uh, made by Lyoba Bruckner recently. And if you don't watch her channel, you should definitely check it out. I just really like um, I like her video style and uh, her art style is beautiful as well uh, but one thing that she does a lot is um, do a voiceover that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the painting and I've already done a lot of voiceovers where I'm explaining kind of step by step what I'm doing during the video or in, in the painting I guess but I don't know, I get kind of tired of doing that because my processes are relatively similar each time. So, uh, but I also feel like I enjoy myself. Um, I enjoy watching videos that people make where there is, when there is a voiceover and it's not just the painting. So um, I like Leoba's approach to this and um, I am going to try it in this video. So I have a question that I got on Tumblr and I'm gonna read it. And it's an anonymous question. So uh, the person just said, hi Kendall, would you say that Instagram is absolutely necessary for artists to sell and succeed? I often come across artists who are well known, but they don't have social media. As useful as a platform like Instagram can be, I wonder if it is a necessity for succeeding in the art world today. What are your thoughts on the idea? So that's an interesting question. And um, as somebody who has really built their career on social media, I feel like for me, I wouldn't have the career that I do have if it weren't for Tumblr and Instagram and uh, Etsy and YouTube, places like that. Um, that's basically the entirety of how I uh, built up my reputation and was able to start getting clients. So for me, it definitely was necessary, but I don't think that necessarily has to be a hard and fast rule. If you think about it in terms of like the publishing world or using writing and uh, in the publishing world as an analogy it's kind of like if you have social media you are doing a self-publishing route and you're putting your work out there and you're building up your audience and you're showing what um, what an audience you have and what audiences out there are ready for your work and then when it comes well, then when it comes time to get a book contract you can show that you have already this demonstrated group of readers so the publisher is probably going to be more likely to be willing to take a risk on you since they can see that you're not just like a completely unknown um, unheard of author and I don't really know anything much about the publishing world but I feel like that's just a, a little bit of a helpful analogy for thinking about it and I think the need to show an established and demonstrated audience is probably more pronounced in the fine art world just because in illustration and commercial art you're mainly just being hired for the end result and the person hiring you is already the market so if they're higher if you're being hired to put your work in a magazine they already have their distribution they already have the people who are going to buy the magazine and maybe if you're like a super super famous illustrator or artist then you would help sell more of the magazine but for the most part, you're just being hired for your skill and to produce a specific end product. As opposed to fine artists who have their work in galleries, it's much more important for them to be able to show that they have a demonstrated um, 
group of collectors and already have an audience and it's just a lot easier that way it's less of a risk for a gallery or, or even a collector to um, to start investing in your work because you can show that there are people out there that want to buy it so um, yeah I think that's the argument for having social media but that being said of, of course there are exceptions and definitely people could be successful without it. Uh, I don't know how to go about that and I don't really feel like I can, oh my gosh, sorry, there's some big noises going on outside. Um, well, I hope it's not too loud, but um, anyway, I don't really feel like I can offer a description or a how-to of how to best succeed in the art world, either in commercial art or in fine art, uh, without using social media because that's not how I've done it and I really don't have any experience approaching it that way. Uh, I don't even really remember, because I wasn't, I'm not old enough and wasn't really doing art then, I don't really know what it was like before the internet and um, yeah, so I, I think that that's I'm sure it is possible and I'm sure there are ways that it would be a lot harder um, than if you are willing to do social media and have an online presence, but, uh, but yeah, I, I don't really know what that would be. So I feel like that's um, a little bit uh, not very satisfying of an answer, but um, that's my honest experience and thoughts on it. So uh, yeah, I guess the gist would be Personally, for me, I think it is important to have social media. It has been really important to have social media, um, and I do still invest a lot of time in it today. So, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at on that topic. All right, next question. I don't actually remember where this one came in. I think that this one came from a YouTube comment, but I've had it sitting in my list of questions for a while, so um, I don't remember who asked it or where I got it. But uh, anyway, the question is, as a freelancer, what would you consider a good amount of work? Is one paid project a month good for you? More a month? What's your goal amount? It's hard to find this type of information online. I know it also depends on how much you make per job and your personal expenses. What do you do when you have no paid work? Well, I'm going to tackle this one backwards just because I feel like I've already addressed this, but I, um, when I don't have a, a paying job or when I'm in between projects, I just work as hard as I can on personal portfolio work so that my portfolio continues to grow and that in turn helps me land more clients. So that's what I focus on if I'm not in the middle of a client project. As to the rest of it, um, I think it totally depends not just on the factors that you mentioned, like how much you make per job and your personal expenses, but for me it also really depends on the size of the project. So for projects for me vary pretty widely. I could be doing um, a client project that has literally just one illustration or I could be doing something that has 20 illustrations. So and then the illustrations themselves can vary a lot too. Sometimes an illustration might only be like two and a half inches across for the total image and like I'm starting uh, on a new project right now that is each illustration is like 16 inches across and so obviously that's a pretty significant uh, change in size and it would be a lot more work than it will be a lot more work than doing an illustration that's only two or three inches across so all of those other factors can vary a lot too um, that being said, I feel like just as a general rule, I try not to be balancing more than like four projects at once. Um, just because with all along with like the project itself and the work itself, there's also all of the related uh, interaction with the client. So emails and potentially calls, which I don't like, but sometimes you have to do calls. Um, yeah. So essentially the, the logistical aspect of it, that becomes more, I don't know, I feel like I just have a harder time with it if I'm balancing more than four projects, certainly more than five projects, and probably a comfortable space for me would be like three projects at once. Um, and then in terms of like actually how it works on the ground, I do really have to be careful about not booking, like if I'm doing a really big project like this one that I'm starting on I probably will be careful to not book another really big project to start for like maybe another four weeks or so I would take on other smaller projects but if I'm balancing two uh, two really big projects that have similar deadlines that has been very stressful for me in the past so I try to avoid that if I can 
but honestly uh, if a client were to come and like also really want that same deadline I probably would just try to find a way to make it work so um, at this point as I've said in other videos uh, if there is an offer and it's an interesting project I do try to take it on as much as I can just because it I feel like it's it's good to be building up my career for the phase of life that I'm in right now so uh, let me see is there anything else I didn't answer in that question um, yeah so I think I think that's about it that's a personal answer but um, those are my thoughts on that so for the next question um, this one came from YouTube and it's a relatively recent question it's from pink dog apples and they ask how do you feel about a portfolio that portrays your transition as an artist as in when you look at my Instagram the art style isn't consistent throughout so um, I think I've talked about this before too, but uh, overall I actually feel like that's totally fine. Even on my Instagram, if you if you look back through it, uh, I think it shows a pretty clear progression and you can see like if you go back a few years or a couple few years, it the style, you can see that it's related to what I'm doing now uh, and certainly the subject matter is is pretty similar but there are some major differences I I personally would feel like it's more of a challenge not if it's showing your transition and growth because that's a good thing but if it's showing that you're I don't know doing like fantasy stuff and then like really realistic um, children's book illustration I don't know I'm trying to think of like very very different styles but if you're if you're doing a ton of different things at once like if you're doing something realistic and then you're doing something like fantasy realism and you're doing manga and you're doing um, you know like five or six really really different things that aren't related at all uh, all at once or you're doing like one piece in a style and never revisiting that style again um, that might be problematic only because there wouldn't be consistency but if it's you know a, a a clear trajectory and you can see that, that the person's art is transitioning and is um, progressing and they're continuing to grow and improve in their skills. I actually think that that's a really cool thing to see in a portfolio and uh, I haven't gone out of my way to hide it on mine. Uh, currently on my website I only put up more recent stuff and I have taken down some older pieces just because if I had everything I've ever made up on my website it would just be too much to navigate it would be really clunky but on social media like on tumblr and instagram if you look way back um on my profile if you just go back and back or in the, in the archives on tumblr you'll see that my style has was really different um a couple few years ago so um yeah i think in those areas i don't mind at all having that transition showing um, but when it comes to my professional uh, website, I do just try to keep what I'm showing more limited. So because of that, I try to show only my best, most recent work. So All right, next uh, question. Yeah. Uh, this is also from YouTube. And I wish I could say this person's name. I know I would absolutely uh, massacre it if I did. So I will try to just put it on the screen. And I'm also going to paraphrase the question uh, just to try to save some time in the video uh, but basically they are asking what kind of portfolio they should get to present their work and they're talking specifically about um, printed portfolios so um, like actual hard copies of their work that they could take around or send out to different publishers or art directors etc so uh, and then asking if I have thoughts and advice on that and how I handle my portfolio and how I present my portfolio. So um, I don't have a printed portfolio. I uh, I have I don't think I've ever sent out postcards. I've sent out some emails to art directors and publishers, but I have never done actual printed stuff. I thought about doing it, but at, honestly, I when I was first getting started, I had read a little bit online and. I didn't find anywhere that seemed to say that that was absolutely necessary and it was easier and um, just more approachable at the time just to put stuff online so I started I started just with Tumblr and I, that was kind of just for fun and I wasn't really wasn't really considering it a professional portfolio but within a year or so I had made a professional portfolio website and that's just what I've used so uh, I think 
maybe in other fields, maybe like for children's book illustration, I could see that that would be more important to have a printed portfolio, but I don't know because that's not my industry and I really haven't spent any time working in that field. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a part of me that feels like it would be a really cool thing to do, but at this point there's no, it would have no real function for me. So. Uh, I don't know if, if I were just getting started again right now, I think I probably would still do the same thing, which is what I always say in my videos when you all ask about getting started in art. It's just that I would make as much work as possible, work as hard as possible on it, and I'll make them work really good and share it on social media uh, as frequently as I can and then uh, put it on, put together our portfolio website using something like Squarespace or Weebly or uh, something like that. So. Yeah, um, I don't know if, if any folks that have experience with printed portfolios, if you all want to share in the comments, if there, if you feel like there is a need for it or situations where you would want to have a, um, a book all put together of your printed work. Uh, so yeah, let the asker know in the comments if you do have thoughts on that. All right, next question, and I think this may actually be the last question. This was from Lori Bauk on YouTube, and Lori asks, when working on a private commission, you mentioned allowing the client to make minor revisions to the color. When you're working in a traditional medium like watercolor, how do you make minor changes to the color without the risk of having to redo the entire piece? I'd like to offer that option to my clients, but I'm nervous that I may have to basically start the piece all over again if I muck around with the color. Would you mind further explaining just how much you allow changes to the color? Thank you. So um, yes, I can see how that could have been confusing. So sorry if, um, if I didn't make that clear when I was talking about revisions and stuff. Um, and I think this was from, this was a question on my private sales versus commercial assignments video. So I will link that as well, either on the screen or in the description box. Uh, anyway, basically um, there, I have a couple of approaches for it. So when I say changes to color, I don't mean like uh, the client can just say, oh, this is, you painted a red apple and I wanted a green apple. Like that would be a massive, massive change to color. If the client, if I was doing an apple for a client, I would get clear up with them, with the client in the sketch phase, whether they wanted a red or a green apple. So let's say the client and I decided on red during the sketch phase and I get to the final and I create a red apple. The types of changes that I would expect from the client and that I would be willing and able to accommodate would be the client saying, oh, you know, can you add, can you darken this red here a little bit? Can you add a little bit more highlight there? So no major, not like a 180 or a, a huge shift. It would just be like tweaks to the color that we had already agreed on basically. Uh, and if there, if it were the type of situation where it weren't something, it, ugh, my goodness, grammar, where it wasn't something that I could fix, uh, with the traditional media, like if if I'm working in watercolor and colored pencil and the client wants something darker, that's fairly easy to do. I can just layer on some more dark colored pencil or if I have passed the point where I can use colored pencil, then maybe using gouache or something like that. Um, and of course I would do a fixative first, but anyway. Um, if I weren't able to do that with traditional media, like maybe the client were to just say overall they would want the apple more saturated. If it was for a uh, digital commission, which, well, not digital, but like if the, the finished product, if the deliverable was digital, if they were paying for a scanned PNG of my work or JPEG or whatever, um, I would just tweak that in my version, my uh, the dupe of Photoshop that I use, which is Pixelmator. And that allows you to change things like saturation and temperature and all that good stuff. So for the most part, I would just edit it traditionally because there are not going to be any huge changes to the color. But uh, if for some reason I weren't able to do that uh, traditionally, I would edit it digitally. Uh, now I can imagine this being a lot harder for people who are not doing realistic stuff or, or who are doing compositions or pieces that have tons of different elements because I don't know like if you're doing a painting that has like a background and not just one subject but multiple different subjects you're not probably going to agree on like every single color with the client ahead of time. But I will say for myself, when I have done more complicated compositions uh, or things that have a lot of different elements, I typically like to kind of add in an extra phase. So I, use my, I usually do 
my just line sketch that has no color and then move on to the final once that's been approved by the client. But if it's a really complicated composition or I feel like there's a lot of different colors going on, I sometimes will do just a digital color sketch so that the client can get a sense for where I'm expecting the color to go. And that would increase the price overall, but it also just saves time in the end because the client isn't gonna be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that one apple green when I wanted it purple. So uh, yeah, I don't know, I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps. And I think that is probably it for this video. So I am just gonna wrap it up here and let me know what you guys think. If you like this kind of video, if you prefer having some kind of a voiceover or conversation as opposed to just the time lapse with music. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, feel free to see my frequently asked questions page or leave them in the comments below if you don't see that question answered anywhere else. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye.